So no matter how ugly the circumstances, no matter how scary the future looks, who's going to be in control? What's going to happen to the almighty dollar? What's going to happen to the economy? Are we going to have a collapse? Hats two cents with God's Church of Love Online. Reading John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So now that I've muted the mics, I won't go through all the questions, but the word we know capitalized like that is Jesus. And when you read in the book of Revelations, you'll also find out that when the church is raptured and we are up in heaven, the bride of Christ, we will no longer be the church. We will be the bride. Jesus will no longer be Jesus for us. Because Jesus, the name Jesus means Savior. And we don't need a Savior when we're up in heaven as his bride. So his name will go back to being, guess what? The Word that's in heaven. So what I want to say is knowing that God <clears throat> in the beginning was the Word, the word was with God and the word was God. For those of you doubting Thomases on YouTube that have um, um, an issue you want to rise with that, verse two says the same, that's the word, was in the beginning with God. Number three, all things were made by him. That's Jesus, the word. And without him, was not anything made that was made, all right? Now, I'm going to read down to five. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. You know what that includes? That includes the devil, Lucifer. Yeah. Four, in him was light. And the light was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. What I want to say to you is there is nothing that has been made on this planet, in space, above the earth, beneath the earth, in the first, second, third heaven, none of that. Nothing has been made. First heaven, the sky. Second heaven, the spirit realm. Third heaven, heaven itself. Don't think that God has a worthy opponent, y'all. Like if Pat and I go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, yeah, okay, she can't fight, I can't fight, I'm fat, she's tall and skinny, and we both would be like a big comical sight, both of us trying to duke it out as much as we love each other. That would be funny too. <laughs> but anyway, see, we would be each other's worthy opponent. But God has no worthy opponent. And I want you to know that because a lot of you think that he has an adversary. Lynn said it so beautifully. He has no adversary. He has no worthy opponent. He has no opposite because he created everything that's out there, including the darkness. God said in Isaiah, I create good. I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. When you go through your life and you're attacked by demons, when you look at what's going on in these last days, excuse me, I'm bundled up in a blanket because my heater doesn't work and it's cold in this house, so you're not going to see me. I'm, I'm hiding right now because I'm a sight with all this stuff on me. But what I want you to know no matter what is going on out there, no matter what crazy crimes are going on, no matter what bizarre diseases are flying in the air, no matter how people are dying or why they're dying, in these last days, God is still in control and that will never change. There will be nothing to come up that can defeat him. He's all power, all knowing.
and he's everywhere at the same time. When you are going through your challenges, your obstacles, like for example, let me just say something really mundane and ordinary. I don't have anybody challenging me to beat me up or uh, threatening and all that, but and the fact that God blessed me with this house, there are things that go wrong. Well, I'm not sitting there chewing my nails down wondering, is the Lord going to come to my rescue? Because God is faithful. Whatever he has begun, he will complete. And whatever is a blessing does not turn out to be a curse. You cannot curse what God has blessed. And for those of you born again Christians, you have to remember what God has blessed. And if you are blessed of God, you cannot be cursed. So I don't know if you remember the prophet that was paid to curse God's people. And every time he opened his mouth to curse, blessings came out of his mouth. Why? You cannot curse what God has blessed. People can try. People have tried down through the centuries. But if God blesses you, baby, that's all that's said and done. So know that we're going through a strange period right now. We are on the precipice of the tribulation period. And we're not there yet. But I want to read something to you from Revelation. Because I want you to understand the authority that God has, the authority. Jesus has the authority of the Holy Spirit. And I want to share with you, there is a thing called the unholy trinity. These three entities are Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. And we're going to introduce that to you right now. In the book of Revelation, chapter 13, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Now, before I go any further, I want you to think about what is the sea? When you look at anything in the Bible dealing with the sea, even in heaven with the crystal sea, the sea usually refers to people. The crystal sea refers to those saints at peace. So, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Now, for those of you who are saying, he's over there, he's over there, it's him, it's her, that's it. Listen to this. And I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Now, for those of you who think you know who and where the Antichrist is, Look at the map. John, who wrote this, was on the Isle of Patmos, right here, right above the Mediterranean Sea. When he referred to the sea, he was referring to the Mediterranean Sea. This is the area the Antichrist will be coming up out of. Keep your eyes open and watch, people. That means that the Antichrist that is who the beast is, is rising up out of the sea of people. So he is a person anointed by the devil, having seven heads and ten horns. Those are the kingdoms and the leaders of this world and the regions. And upon his horns, ten crowns. And upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. Do you notice? See, we know the spirit of Antichrist is already here. You can see it in almost every movie. That I mean, you can't hardly start a movie now without hearing the GD. Everybody's GD and God to, to death. I mean, it's, I've never heard so much blasphemy with his name as I've been hearing lately. It is just off the chain. Number two. Verse 2, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet was as the feet of a bear, and his mouth 
as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him, and you know who the dragon is. The dragon is the devil. The dragon gave him power and his seat and great authority. So the devil appointed him, so to speak. All right. Now, the one thing you have to know earlier on in the book of Revelations, book of Revelation, is that Jesus handed the key of authority to Satan. So no matter what, you have to know that Satan's level of authority is limited and controlled and given to him by Jesus. He doesn't just have authority because he's the devil. No, the devil was given authority by Jesus to a certain measure. What God is doing is he is setting up the stage. And a lot of us are watching closely because even unbelievers know we're on the edge of the end. We all know that. But the thing that baffles me is why are so many Christians intimidated by the devil? Why are they so intimidated by the demons? Why are they so intimidated by the works of darkness? And why would a born again Christian consult with the works of darkness to find out what their future holds? Why would they consult with the works of darkness to gain what they think is power where they can make thing, good things happen in their lives? Many of you are dabbling Many of you born-again Christians, there is more witchcraft operating in the church and believers than ever before. And you've got to really be careful because witchcraft is an abomination along with all that other stuff to, to God. So you cannot serve both masters. You're either going to serve God or you're going to serve Satan. One or the other. One or the other. There's no in-between, there's no middle ground. You can call it straddling the fence all you want, but it's one or the other. Yeah, we go through struggles. I'm not talking about that. God is with us. He helps us through those struggles. But you're on this planet, not just because God was bored, and he did, he's twiddling his thumbs and he was feeling a little lonely. No, he's self-contained. You're on this planet. You've got to picture it as a classroom. You've got to picture it as a learning experience. It's, it's a, a journey of lessons on top of lessons, on top of lessons, on top of lessons. And all the way, because Satan has been given a certain amount of authority, you are subject being on this planet. You are subject to being afflicted, attacked, um, messed with by, by the enemy. And the enemy will try to send you lies. He will... He will plant things in your head and make it so believable. But you have to decide, are you going to believe the truth or are you going to believe a lie? Now, here we are in these last days. Who do you believe in the most? Who do you fear the most? See, here's the sad part. <clears throat> a lot of people fear the devil. They are afraid of the devil. But too few people fear God. Isn't that kind of weird? That's weird, isn't it? Think of it this way. Here I am. I take a match. I strike a match that man made. I take a cigarette that I just rolled up myself. 
and I light the cigarette with the match. Now, I am the one in control. That match can burn me if I do something stupid, but if I'm the one in control, all I have to do is put the match out or blow it out. If I'm the one in control, just like I lit the cigarette, I can put the cigarette out. But the cigarette, neither the cigarette nor the match can put me out. They don't have that power. And many of you are, have got it twisted. You think the devil is all powerful and you think God is stumbling through the darkness saying, oh no, what do I do? What do I do? Oh, I didn't expect that to happen. No, that's not the way it goes. And here's the other thing that many of you don't seem to have a handle on. God, who gave his authority to Jesus, guess what? Jesus gave his authority to us, the believers, those who follow Christ. The authority he has, I don't know if you ever saw a video. I'm just trying to share the authority. I'm trying to drill that in. So go with me on this for a minute. Just bear with me. There was a video I watched on YouTube, and it was taken in, in, in the Philippines. Two tornadoes were touching down. How many of you would have thought to do this? Two tornadoes were touching down. These Filipinos were at church, y'all, and they interrupted their church service to go out and tell those two tornadoes to go back where they came from. And the two tornadoes couldn't have been no more than a mile from them. It was close. And some of them prayed in tongues, some of them prayed in English, some of them prayed in, in their language, their native language. And let me tell you, baby cakes, both of those tornadoes went back up in the sky and stayed up, never came back down. And as a result, the tornado, the, neither one did any damage because they took the authority that God gave us through Jesus Christ. They took the authority and commanded that sucker to go back where it came from. Many of us have no clue the power, the arsenal, the weapons of warfare that we carry inside of us. If you are filled with the Holy Ghost, baby, you got all you need. You don't need a gun. You don't need a knife. You got your mouth and the name of Jesus. And if those of you who can't speak, those of you who have damage done to your tongue, you can think it, you can will it by the name of Jesus. Even in dreams, when all I could do was think the name of Jesus, it was done. But I speak it because I want to make sure. The bottom line is, you have to take authority. You have to know who God is. You have to know who Jesus is. You have to know who the Holy Spirit is and where he dwells. And now let's get back down to earth. Do you know if you're being attacked by a pack of dogs, it's happened to me, that's how I know. You can rebuke or bind those dogs, especially bind. I bind you in the name of Jesus. And whatever that dog was coming to do to you, it cannot. It cannot. That name, Jesus, will stop him dead in his tracks. Dead in his tracks. There are people who have driven on the freeway. What I'm trying to do is paint a picture for you of the authority, the arsenal you carry in you. On the freeway, this couple was headed somewhere, I think, to church or to a convention. 
and it was a multiple car accident happening all around them. And when they recognized, oh no, instead of hollering, oh no, they hollered, the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's all they kept saying. And all the way through, the, as they drove, the accidents were happening all around them, but it was well, it was like watching the parting of this of the Red Sea. All of a sudden, whatever cars were hitting and banging and flipping were totally getting out of their way as they approached that spot. And they were able to drive through a multiple car, a multiple car accident. They were able to drive through it as if God just parted the way for them. He will go ahead of you and make the crooked places straight and the rough places plain, which means smooth. He will smooth out your rough edges. He will clear the path in front of you. God has a purpose for you. God has a direction for you to go. God has your destiny. He is not going to allow the enemy to rip you off, to rape you, to sodomize your destiny. He's not going to do that. No, but you can allow it to happen through your fears and through your doubts. You can allow it just like a child allows himself to be bullied and they don't tell it. They don't bring the dark works to the light. So nobody knows what's going on and the bullies keep bullying don't they? I remember when I was a child, long time ago, you, you better not laugh, Peter. I remember long, way back in the stone ages, I was in school and I was bullied by a, a boy named Billy and he crossed the line and I was bullied by that boy for about a year. The whole year we were in school, toward the end, he made a mistake. He crossed the line by stomping on a brand new coat that was a, a Christmas present. And I love that coat, y'all. I love the coat now. Yeah, he crossed the line. Pick on me. Don't mess with my coat. And I went in that classroom and somebody told me what he did. And I stood there lying in wait. Yes, I did. I crouched down like a lion ready to jump on its prey. And as soon as that boy, and I was smart because I didn't know how to fight. So I made sure I got, I got his back. Soon as he walked past me and I was looking at his back, I jumped up in the air and pounced on him like a lion. And I got to scratching and beating and pounding and kicking. And boy, I'm telling you, I was tearing that boy up. I was about nine years old. <laughs> but guess what? The bullying stopped. It was as if the boy wasn't even in class anymore. You have got to take authority. Quit laying down and playing dead when the enemy comes in like a flood. Don't you know the word says the Lord will lift up a standard? But you got to do something too, baby. You don't just lay there and whimper. You don't just cover your head with the blankets. You open your mouth wide. I don't care if you if you feel the fear. You open your mouth wide in faith and say, I command you to go in the name of Jesus. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Satan can only do what God allows. Now, here's the other thing to that. There are times when God will use the necessary evils. In other words, he will use Satan and his demons as his bellhop. And he will allow certain evils to take place to usher you into a position for God's blessing. I'm going to share a summer experience I had. Some of you have heard the other stories too often. So let me go to something you haven't heard much of. See, there's an undercurrent going on in society, the spirit of Antichrist. There's an undercurrent where the demons are attacking the people, believers and unbelievers. That's why there's so many suicides. 
But one thing we have to remember, we have to learn from God and from reading his word. What did Jesus do with the devil? How did he handle him? What did he say to him? Yes, you have the right to do the same. So listen, <laughs> I was sitting there. I'm going to read a scripture too if, I, if, if the Lord reminds me. I was sitting there swimming in the ocean. And they had warned us there's a riptide in the water. Be careful. Don't go out too far. It can drag you out further than you expect. And I got so happy with the swimming, I forgot about that riptide. And before I knew it, everybody on the beach looked like little teeny weeny little ants. I was out there, y'all. Ah! So I wasn't even a Christian. And I asked, I asked, I said a quiet prayer. Please help me get back safely. And I laid on my back and I swam in. That's why I have my biggest strength swimming on my back. I swam in toward the shore, but I didn't swim directly against it. I swam diagonally. And let me tell you, the thing that got me is how right when I got midway, I just could not seem to get in any further. So I had to lay on my back and float. And guess what? Now I'm being pulled back out. So what I did was all of a sudden, I'm like, I started treading water. And all of a sudden, a wave came that I didn't see coming. It was a big one. And that thing whipped me around and popped me up and down. And oh, my goodness. I was like, oh, I don't even know which end is up. And I'm holding, uh, now I got to talk to myself. Hold your back. Don't breathe in. Don't breathe in. Fight the urge. Because I knew once I settled, I could push myself, put my feet there and push myself up from the bottom. Well, even if the bottom hit me on my arm, because I was totally, I was totally um, uh, mixed up. I had no idea what, what where up and down, right and left was. I had no bearings. And, and the sand hit me on my shoulder. So I put my feet there and I bent my knees, kicked up, and I kept all the way up. Don't breathe, don't breathe, don't breathe, don't breathe. You get there, you'll get there. And when I got there, another wave came. And guess what it did? It dragged me all the way to shore. So what I'm saying with that is I was able to walk over to safety. You can see that because I'm still here. Very millennial anyway. So what I want to say to you is no matter what life throws your way, there will always be a purpose. There is going to be lessons learned. There will be flesh that God is burning off of your hide and burning out of your character. There will be revelations for you to receive, deep understandings that God is trying to get you to see about life, people, him, and you. God will teach you through his word how to get through this thing unscathed. You may hurt while you're going through it, but when you come out like a mother getting over the labor pains of a baby, you will no longer remember that pain because you will be too busy enjoying the victory. See, with God, you have to remember in the book of Romans, all things work together for good to them that love God and who are called according to his purpose. So when you're in Christ Jesus, no matter what life brings, be it death, sickness, injury, harm, malfunction, hiccups, obstacles, attacks, uh, accusations, firings, whatever happens. Loss. God is setting you up for another blessing. The same way he did with Joseph. He told his brothers when he was in total control right there next to Pharaoh, totally elevated and promoted by God through a gift God gave to him. And all the time he thought people were forgetting him and just leaving him in that prison. 
But God had his heyday. And he told his brothers who had sold him off to slavery, you meant it for bad, but God meant it for good. See, God will use everything and still get the upper hand. He will allow the ugliest circumstances, but he will get the upper hand, y'all. And those things you don't understand, those things you don't get, the main thing you have to ask God to convince you of is his love and his authority. Because once you're convinced of who he is, what he's capable of doing, and that he loves you because he is love, guess what? Your doubts will not rise so high. You may have a few moments where you're like, oh boy, that, that, that took me back a few steps. But guess what? You'll regain your, <laughs> you will regain your uh, bearings and you will remember, you will bring to remembrance who God is and all that he's capable of doing. Don't allow the things happening on this planet, the things happening in your family, the things happening in your body, the things that are going, don't allow it to pull you down. I spent a week, like five days, suffering from stomach pains. I was going to go and do things. I couldn't do anything. I had to stay in because I was going through some flip, flippity flops. And, I, and just when I thought, Lord, let me know if I need to go to the hospital, the song, and God talks to us through songs too, popped in my head, wait on the Lord. And I knew then that God had it and he was going to handle it. And I said, if it takes five days or five weeks, God's got it and he's going to handle it. And I placed myself, my health, my body, my life in his hands. So no matter how ugly the circumstances, no matter how scary the future looks, Who's going to be in control? What's going to happen to the almighty dollar? What's going to happen to the economy? What's go is, are we going to have a collapse? Guess what? That's neither here nor there if you're in God. Don't even trip it. Don't worry about it. As, they, as the old expression you hear them in, in the New York uh, stereotypes, don't worry about it. <laughs> just sit down be still and know that he is God not the devil not the devil not Lucifer not his cohorts not the mark of I mean not the, the beast the antichrist not his political his um his promotional man not the religious dictator of the world. God is God. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He's never, never fallen short of his word. You hear me? Don't you dare. Don't you dare shake, rattle, and roll when the devil rears his ugly head. Don't you dare shake, rattle, roll, or panic when the economy goes cuckoo and things go belly up. Don't you dare run and hide in the shadows with a blanket over your head when the devil shakes his behind and plays his ugly music to the tune of this going wrong and that going wrong and those people going against you and those people accusing you and, and, and them over there rejecting you and talking behind talking about you behind your back and the money's funny and the change is strange and your body is tripping. Don't you dare. God is in control, not the devil, not the body, not the enemies of this planet, not the politicians. God is in control. And don't you ever forget that. Mm -hmm.